Hey, my friends, let's chat, shall we? We'll talk about Jesus. We'll talk about the rapture. We'll share some news headlines, some comments of the day, and we'll hang out. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River channel. And as I do every single day, I remind you, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor. And I'm not even a great teacher. I'm just a dude that loves the Lord. I really love talking about the Lord. And I love hanging out with you guys. So get comfortable. Grab yourself something to eat and drink. Maybe you want coffee or tea. Ooh, have some moxie and some fish and chips. Or grab whatever it is that you like to eat and drink when you hang out with a, an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. Let's get busy. So I believe that I was sent to this river 19 months ago to proclaim that Jesus is coming soon to rapture his church. What's his church? The people that belong to him. The people with the indwelling Holy Spirit of God. And I was called to this river to warn that there isn't much time. And some of you will say, well, Tom, that was a year and a half ago. So I guess there was a lot of time. No, that's not a lot of time. That's not a lot of time. Some people say that Noah warned for a hundred years. Some people say he took him 40 years to build the ark. We don't know exactly how long it took, but he warned. I've been warning a year and a half. And if you look at what has happened in the world in the last 19 months, I mean, this community grew really, really fast. And we watched together all the signs converge for the rapture. I really believe, and I say this all the time, I really believe we're just waiting for the rapture of the church at this point. I don't think anything has to happen. There have been many, many people that are very upset with me. And you know what? Sorry, it's guilt by association. They're upset with you too, because we're excited about the rapture of the church and we're talking about the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. And we have joy. This is a joy-filled community and people don't like that. And sad to say, I'm talking about a lot of people who call themselves Christians. They're they're very, very mad and angry that we believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. <laughs> and it's we, un, we, we unapologetically talk about the pre-tribulation rapture of the church here, don't we? Um, but let me just remind you that no one can steal our joy. No one. Don't let anyone steal your joy. They're coming after your crown. Don't let them have it. Don't let them steal your joy. Don't let the mockers steal your joy. Don't let the scoffers steal your joy. They're just fulfilling Bible prophecy. No one can steal our joy. First Thessalonians 5, 1 through 6. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, you are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. It's exactly what we do here every single day. We're watching, we're waiting, and we have a sober mindedness about us. We don't need Paul to come back and write to us again regarding the times and the seasons. We're, we're, we have eyes and ears. We're in the season. We're in the final days before the rapture. We don't need him to write to us again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, which is raptured from the Latin translation, rapturo shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. It's a comfort to me. Every time I read those scriptures, it's comfort. 
because we're in those days. We're watching them happen right before our eyes. October 7th in Israel started a war. It was a, it was a terrifying day terrifying day in the history of Israel. But more than that, I believe it was a I believe it was a major step in Bible prophecy when I saw that war break out. I really really do believe that this is the war that at the end of this they're already saying, you know, peace and security. You got to stop this Israel for peace and security. Got to stop it. Got to stop it then sudden destruction comes. I think we're at that point, just waiting for the rapture. I think out of this war comes the Daniel 927 covenant. It's not decades away, I'll tell you that. The rapture is not decades away. The rapture is not years away. I believe the rapture is now. I believe we're waiting for it right now. That encourages me greatly to get up every day and tell you guys, yeah, it is soon. He is coming soon to get us. We've watched all the signs converge. We see this war in Israel and we're just waiting for our Lord and Savior to get us. Does that get you excited? It gets me excited. I am so ready. <laughs> I am so ready. But there's a lot of people that are coming to the Lord in these days. There's a lot of people, there's a final harvest. So I am committed until the day of the rapture to just proclaim the gospel every day until we're out of here. But that doesn't mean that, you know, I mean, whew, I'm begging Jesus to come. <laughs> All right, let's look at some news headlines, see what's going on in the world, okay? All right, this is from All Israel News. Israel adopts a policy of active defense against Hezbollah and strikes targets deep within Lebanon. This was yesterday. Skirmishes between Israel and Hezbollah terror organization on the Israel-Lebanon uh, Israel border continued the, throughout the weekend as Israel announced a more aggressive policy in response to Hezbollah's daily attacks. Speaking at a situation assessment at the northern border, border on Saturday, Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, said, we have adopted a policy of active defense, exacting a price against every threat from the air and from the ground with great force. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Over the weekend, this is from Jerusalem Post, Hezbollah fired over a thousand rockets and Israel is warning Iran's proxies. Defense minister Yoav Gallant on Sunday said that the defense establishment has noted a growing trend of Iran pushing for militia attacks against Israel using its proxies in Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. Although Yemen and Syrian proxies of the Islamic Republic have both attacked the Jewish state several times since Operation Swords of Iron began, to date Iraq has gone under the radar and most proxy attacks have been against the United States. We've seen a rising of, I mean, how many did we say? Now there's been over 50 attacks in the last month on the United States from that part of the world. This is from the Times of Israel. Iran's former IRGC chief said the new war fronts could open against Israel. The former head of Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps has warned that new war fronts could open if Israel continues its offensive in Gaza. Uh, the Times of Israel said IDF says it's carrying out preemptive artillery shelling in South Lebanon amid repeated Hezbollah attacks. Same story every day right now, right? The full front hasn't opened there. Because if it did, you would see many thousands of rockets going. But we're seeing these skirmishes at the border and just wondering how long is this going to be while the whole world is saying peace and security. The Israel Defense Forces says it carried out preemptive artillery shelling in southern Lebanon this morning, and this was today, this, you know, this morning Israel time, amid repeated attacks by Hezbollah terror group. From Israel today, this morning has seen almost nonstop fighting along the northern border. Israeli communities and IDF bases have been targeted by rockets, mortars, anti-tank missiles, and at least two drones. The IDF has responded with artillery and airstrikes. If it weren't for the situation in Gaza, 
This would be the top headline around the world. As things stand, it's barely given any attention, even in even here in Israel, they said. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. Senior Iranian official says Gaza war will expand to new fronts in the coming days. Um, he said it was the ex-revolutionary guard guy I read about a minute ago, and he tells Lebanese media that the proxies in Iraq and Yemen are prepared to support Hamas forces by launching new fronts against Israel. In the coming days, we'll see additional fronts join the conflict in Gaza. We'll see. We'll see what goes on there. I know one thing, man. There have been a lot of protests around the world. You know how we talked about this since the war started on October 7th. This weekend was no exception. In Berlin, Germany, just incredible. Thousands and thousands of pro-Palestinian people demonstrating and marching. Um, Indonesia had a ginormous protest in support of the Palestinians. Where else? New York City, Penn Station, they had a ton of people there and uh, the pro-Palestinian. This one, Amir Sarfati shared a video. I couldn't believe it. It was a bunch of dudes in red coats with, with swastika flags marching. And he said, this is not 1933 in Nazi Germany. It's 2023 in Wisconsin, USA. Really sad. Really sad to see that. Uh, many thousands were demonstrating pro-Palestinian in, in Australia over the weekend. And then there were some, there were some pro-Israel ones, but it just seemed like they were much smaller. You know, oh, this was unbelievable. You guys listen up. I don't know if you heard about this. This is from Israel today, but over the weekend, the Palestinian Authority released on their social media channels a document blaming Israel for killing the people that fleed that concert on October 7th. They literally, they put out a statement saying that Israel bombed those people, killed those people fleeing from the concert. It was one of those things you knew right away because any way you look at it, when you, if you're really paying attention and you're like on Twitter and Telegram and news breaks, watch those first videos because they're going to tell a much more accurate story than once the mainstream media gets a hold of it. So we saw that morning, many of us, we saw it live as it was happening. We knew it was not the IDF, but that's what the Palestinian Authority did. Well, anyway, it says without with no apology or explanation, Momad Abbas's Palestinian Authority has suddenly deleted from all its social media channels the statement it released yesterday, which was Saturday, claiming that Israel and not Hamas had carried out the massacre against its own people in southern Israel on October 7th. So they just deleted it. Because, all right, if we delete it, it never happened. You know, we saw that. We saw it. From all Israel news. 85% of Palestinians expressed support for Hamas massacre on October 7th, Palestinian poll finds. An overwhelming majority of Palestinians, both in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, expressed their support for the Hamas massacre on October 7th, a poll by the Arab World for Research and Development found. In its most revealing find, 85% of those polled support the October 7th attacks, either strongly or at least somewhat. Surprisingly, 68% of the West Bank residents strongly supported the Hamas assault as compared to 47% of the respondents in Gaza. No surprise there. Doesn't surprise me. There was very strong flooding. I think I even shared a video on Telegram of it. Strong flooding in uh, Jordan Valley in the Jericho area. Really crazy flooding. Turkey had a huge storm. It hit Istanbul. Parts of the city were flooded. And that was crazy video. Wildfires are raging across Virginia, Tennessee, and North Carolina. I didn't know this. Wildfires have been burning across Virginia, North Carolina, and Tennessee, resulting in parts of the Appalachian Trail being shut down. According to officials, the U.S. Forest Service in North Carolina announced on a Facebook post Friday that part of the trail 
from Interstate 40 to Max Patch had to be shut down as a result of the Black Bear Fire, which started on Thursday. So we got fires and floods. Rescue efforts underway following major flooding in the Dominican Republic. Heavy rain and flooding were forecasted to continue through Monday for parts of the Dominican Republic. At least 20 deaths have been caused by the flooding that started on Friday. 79 earthquakes last 48 hours over 4.0. 11 of them over 5.0. So there you go. Also, from Insider Paper, South Korea warns North Korea to scrap the spy satellite launch plans. Hey, leave Kim alone. He wants to he wants to launch. He needs to make his mark. Kim needs to make his mark. Leave him alone. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like to make fun of that guy. It's probably not right, but you know, I hope he finds Jesus before he leaves uh Earth. South Korea's military warned North Korea on Monday to immediately stop preparations for a spy satellite launch, vowing to take necessary measures if it goes ahead. North Korea is preparing to launch a spy satellite for the third time after failing twice this year to put a military eye in the sky. If North Korea goes ahead with the launch of a military reconnaissance satellite, despite our warning, our military will take necessary measures to guarantee the lives and safety of our people. I don't know, Kim. I don't know if you're going to be able to get that satellite up there. Just You just keep working on your nukes, okay? <laughs> Sorry. All right, from Insider Paper, South Africa is going to chair BRICS. Extraordinary joint meeting on the situation that's happening in Gaza. Tomorrow, BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Korea, they're going to have this big powwow and uh, South South Africa is going to chair the meeting, and it's going to be all about how much they hate Israel. Bottom line, that's what it's going to be about. <laughs> uh, from Forbes, this is definitely clown world. Uh, artificial intelligence, the Category 5 hurricane the public doesn't see. Listen to this. This is the challenge currently faced with the rapid rise of artificial intelligence even the creators of neural networks, the artificial intelligence systems that learn and adapt like the human brain, they confess they don't know if they can control their creations. It reminds us of Dr. Victor Frankenstein, <laughs> whose creation ran amok. In the movie, once the monster comes to life and opens his eyes, Victor triumphantly shouts, it's alive. <laughs> well, it's time to turn on the sirens for the general population and let everyone know this creation called AI is alive. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this AI, but I know one thing. I'll just I'll just have water. You know, please. I just don't I'm not for this. I think this is a giant part of the coming beast system. I really do. I think AI is is a giant part of the deception. It's coming to this world quickly. How about we get some comments of the day, shall we? Let's do it. I have a lot of them today. Ricky, we're almost home. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for all the help you have given me. And without you, I would be lost and without peace and hope. Jesus is my king and he loves me and I love him. Israel will win. Amen, Ricky. Thank you. Thank you. Stormy Coop. I see so many people saying the rapture is not true. I see people changing their faith. I'm a believer in Jesus. I believe that we will be raptured. I believe what the Bible says. Bingo, your last line said it all right there. People will say to me, Tom, what do you think about everyone changing their mind about the pre-tribulation rapture? Maybe we're wrong. I always reply with, has scripture changed? Is scripture wrong? Are we going to start saying next, maybe Jesus didn't shed his blood for us on the cross? Because that to me would be the exact same thing. The pre-tribulation rapture is all over scripture, Old Testament to New Testament. Pre-wrath doesn't make sense. Post-wrath, the U-turn rapture doesn't make sense. It's pre-tribulation rapture. So no, I haven't changed my mind. But many have. I've told you before, you guys. The older folks know this if they've been looking for a long time. 
you look back in the 70s and 1980s and even into the 1990s, like 80% of the Bible-believing churches believed in a pre-tribulation rapture. And we just saw as the years went on, we just saw it lessen and lessen and lessen. And now it's like, I feel like we're a remnant. We're just a small sliver. But doesn't that make sense in a way? When you look at things, the more the more the majority is against something, the more I look at it and go, hmm, it gets fishy in every aspect of life. Now, a pre-tribulation rapture is what it is. No one could ever convince me, ever convince me it's anything else but a pre-tribulation rapture. Johnny, I'm a believer in the son of the living God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus, who said it is finished. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Johnny. Yes, he did. It is finished. A sin debt had been paid in full. Seen, heard, and loved. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 20. He is still at work today, walking us through our troubles. He is there, holding you by your right hand. Don't give up. Don't let go. Amen. Thank you for that encouragement. Nay. Nay said, I was watching my one-year-old in his car seat, getting antsy as I drove the car. And even though I assured him we were right around the corner to our destination, he still cried. Tom, I feel like our journey to seeing the rapture is like this. Jesus is driving the car in his perfect timing, and we're in the back seat facing backwards, watching the signs pass us by. And even though we're right there, it looks as though it's far away. Thank you for the encouragement every day. I needed this. Thank you, Nay, because you just encouraged many. I like that. Yeah, we're in little car seats facing backwards and we're seeing all the signs, but we're like, well, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And Jesus knows exactly when he's coming to get us. Slim 56. I just want to say thank you, Tom. You're like a friend I've known for years, even though I've never met you. Every day I know that I get to hang out with my good friend, Tom, and talk about Jesus. Thank you, Slim. You're my good friend. I have so many brothers and sisters, and I can't wait for eternity to get started. <laughs> I really can't. I can't wait to get to know every one of you, because you know what? There's no nutty uncles in eternity if you belong to Jesus, you know? <laughs> There's no crazies. And we're not robots at the same time, which is the beautiful thing. So... That's why the family's so big. We have eternity to get to know each other. Can't wait. Cannot wait. Comments like that warm my heart. Yeah, we're going to hang out and talk about Jesus forever. Marie. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Psalm 126, verse 5. These words have been a comfort many a time when my heart couldn't take the burden anymore. Praying for loved ones and not seeing a change of heart. Praying for people who suffer terrible injustices. Hearing the lies in the mainstream media. But God is faithful and he gives us courage once more. One more day, one more prayer, one more act of kindness, one more hurdle to jump. I know he is with us in all this mess and he will see us through. What a day that will be. No more sorrow, no more tears, just pure joy. Maranatha. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. There is coming a day when there will be no pain. There is coming a day when we will rejoice and be with our Savior and our Lord forever. That day is coming soon. And it hurts my heart when I think about the people that reject Jesus. It hurts my heart to think that there are actually people that have heard the good news that our sin has been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. And they'll say, no, I don't need that. I don't want that. I just, I'm addressing them every day in these videos, just saying, you don't understand, please give it, a, give it another look. Please don't dismiss it. Your eternity is hangs in the balance. Because at the moment of conception, like it or not, you became an eternal being. You will spend somewhere for eternity. 
and you can't opt out of it. You can't opt out of being an eternal being. So I'm trying to tell you, look, look, you're an eternal being. Don't reject Jesus. Don't reject the one who came and don't. There's so many people like there's a hundred paths to heaven. All religions lead to heaven. No, 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 no. That's a lie from Satan. Because every major religious figure, none of them said they were God except Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father but by me. He's the only one. And he's the only one who died shedding his blood to pay for our sins. And he is definitely the only one who resurrected and was seen by over 500 people. Muhammad didn't resurrect. Buddha's been gone thousands of years. Only Jesus. He's your path to heaven. There's no one else coming along. There's nothing else I can offer you. But all I can tell you is, yes, you are an eternal being. You will spend someplace for eternity. And now I'm telling you the good news, the gospel. That we're all sinners. And we can't spend eternity with a perfect God if we have our sin that's unforgiven. It's got to be removed from us. And the only way that sin can be removed is by the powerful blood of Jesus that he shed on the cross. It's the only thing that will wash us white as snow and remove the sins from us. Nothing else will. So you say, well, how do you get to heaven? You have to understand that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords came to, came to earth from heaven knowing I'm going there to shed my blood which will wash away their sins, the ones who will believe. That's exactly what Jesus did. He came here. He put on human flesh. He was 100% God and 100% man, fully God, fully man in the same body. He walked the earth perfectly. He never sinned the whole time knowing I'm going to end up shedding my blood because I love these people. He did it because he loves us. That's exactly what Jesus did. They took him, they brutalized him, they nailed him to the cross. He wasn't shocked. He wasn't shocked when they grabbed him and arrested him. Some people try to blame, oh, you know, the Jews had him killed. Oh, the Romans had him. It's He wasn't shocked. He came here to die because he loves you and he wants to spend eternity with you. And he shed that precious blood that will wash you white as snow. Then he went to the cross. He died. His last words, it is finished. The total debt, the sin debt had been paid in full. Then they buried Jesus and he rose again on the third day. And that's the gospel. So will you hear all this and say, I still don't want it. I still don't believe it. Because you will kneel before Jesus one day on judgment day. You will. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Do you really want to kneel before the King of Kings and look at his scarred hands and know the one I'm kneeling before paid for my sins, but while I had breath in my lungs on earth, I said no. Because you will be, if you reject this message, you will be led off to hell because you are an eternal being. And Satan lies to everyone and tries to say that hell is a party. You know, you've heard it. Your friends, oh, I want to go to hell. It's a little rougher on the edges, a little cooler. You know, we can smoke and play cards and there's a lot of girls and oh, no, no. They, Satan's just twists that. The whole concept of hell came from the word of God and it's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, very hot and it never ends. And I don't want anyone to go there. That's why I say this every single day. I don't want anyone to go there. All you have to say is, forgive me of these sins, Lord. I believe in you. I believe in the power of your blood. We're saved by grace, which is an unearned gift through faith in Christ Jesus. Once you say, I believe in the power of that blood, forgive these sins, Lord. I believe you died on the cross. You were buried. You rose again on the third day. And I need a savior, Lord. And you are the only savior. You're the only way to heaven. And I'm not giving up this opportunity. Lord, forgive me. Once you do that, God will put his Holy Spirit in you. You'll be born again. 
You'll be rapture ready. You'll be sealed until the day of redemption. He will never let you out of the palm of his hand. And that's what I got for you today. I, I just, I highly recommend that if you're leaning toward rejecting this message, you better rethink it because eternity never, ever ends. I'm going to shut the camera off now and I'm going to pray for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and my goodness, today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if we're not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you.